Hello everyone, today I will be starting a series explaining the basics of what capitalism is, what it does, and why. This video will be explaining what capitalism is. This analysis is based partially on the text Wage, Labor, and Capital by Marx, but is also influenced by many of my different anarchist readings. And then first and foremost, my personal experience with these topics. I live in this society and experience these property relations every day after all. Capitalism is a system based around the property relation and capital. It is commonly said that capital is synonymous with money or property, but it is much more complicated than that. It is based around private ownership over industrialized means of production. Each of these concepts will be a section in this video. Means of production. Means of production are the tools we use to do labor. In capitalism, labor tends to be focused around producing commodities to be bought and sold for profit. In general, though, by production, I mean the creation of a specific state of things. This can include actions such as distribution or education. A hammer can be means of production. A kitchen can be means of production. A computer can be means of production. And a shipping container can be means of production. By can here, I mean it may not be involved in production. Sometimes the computer part just breaks, and it sits there collecting dust. And while it may still make a change of some sort, our labor is not involved in doing so. Means of production are produced on means of production as well. And the physical bits can exist as a commodity to be bought and sold, whether or not they have ever been used as tools. While I have been referring to individual tools here, the whole system of tools is generally what is important. The whole restaurant, not just the stove, for example. The commodity that is bought and sold isn't produced on the stove alone. Instead, the restaurant sells the whole experience as a commodity, not the individual intermediary actions. Taking orders, making them, bringing them, and cleaning up afterwards are all part of the state of things restaurants produce. This means, when we talk about means of production, we must consider them as systems, not just individual tools. A hammer without a nail is nothing. A hammer and a nail without something to hammer isn't going to do much. And without someone holding these tools, nothing would ever happen. Arbitrary social concepts like value and price can change on a whim. But the fact of how much effort it takes to hammer in a nail, and that someone needs to do it, cannot. In my experience, private ownership is the least clear of these topics to people first being introduced to it. In this explanation, I use a dichotomy consisting of private and personal ownership. I do not use private ownership here in a way it is commonly used. This is because a lot of capitalist propaganda is about conflating different forms of ownership in an attempt to justify them. This means I need to start from the ground up a bit here to make sure everyone has a good idea of what I am talking about. If you do not already feel you know all too much about this, please try to keep your prior understanding of these words and concepts separate. Pretend you have never heard these words before. So first, ownership is ownership. It is something you have the ability to control access to. I own my computer because it is in front of me, and I have roughly full control over access to it. If a cop were to run in here and take it home at gunpoint, it would be theirs. It only matters what the law says insofar as it directs the violence of the state. If it's supposed to be mine, but I can't so much as touch it, it might have some relation to me, but it isn't ownership. I mean, look at all the stolen land the vast majority of us live on. We say Jim down the street owns his house, don't we? Personal property is property somebody owns and intends to personally use, typically in methods outside of commodity production. 
the car you drive around with, the house you live in, etc. Private property is property one person or group owns for the explicit purpose of controlling somebody else's access to it. This is typically property owned for commodity production. Examples of this include restaurants and factories. You have one person, or a group, who controls access to the property. This is given in return for a portion of the total money created through producing and selling things, as well as control over how it happens. With this, there is something commonly called surplus value by leftists, or simply profit by capitalists. This is the difference between what the workers produce and what they are paid. Note, some capitalists will say you can earn a profit by just making yourself a one-person business. That is often just an attempt at confusing us. Working as a contractor is just wages given piecemeal by the market, and not just any individual capitalist. Their goal is to give you false solidarity with the capitalists. While we often treat each business as a separate entity, and have many different abstracted money inputs and outputs, at the end of the day, all resources are produced through the labor of workers. Each individual step in the process is randomly subdivided into different groups of privately owned property that interact, but combining all the inputs and outputs of these different groups leads to the simple input of labor and output of wages and profit. This is why leftists think in terms of classes, while right-wingers attempt to get you to think in terms of individuals, as profit is used to buy more capital, and so this form of ownership is self-replicating. In a way, personal property is not. We'll get into that more with the next video. Essentially, you can think of it as workers having to pay the capitalist in order to access the means of production. Means of production are rented out to you like apartments. And like apartments, you have little control over what is actually done with them and all that. I can't even choose the color of the walls of this apartment. Industrialization is what has separated capitalism from systems such as feudalism. This has to do with the mix of changes in both division of labor and methods of resource consumption. For lots of labor historically, each person learned to complete the entire process on their own and did it that way. While you could shove multiple weaving looms together into one room, it did not make them any more efficient. One person per loom. That also made it infeasible to privately own these looms. Who would pay you to access one when there was no benefit over owning one yourself? However, with industrialization, production becomes more efficient the more concentrated means of production become. By concentrated here, I loosely mean the more productive it is, and the more labor it takes for production to happen. A train is more efficient than a car, but it takes much more resources to set up, and must be involved in much more production to actually save labor. It just takes more people to get a train moving than to drive a car. The increase in efficiency is possible, because as the labor is divided up into more distinct and simple roles, using technology to aid in the completion of these tasks becomes easier. On top of that, as a person does a task more often, the time savings of new technology outweigh the cost of them. No reason to buy a rice cooker if you only make rice once a year. This technology helps both by simplifying actions and by standardizing them. This then allows the action to be completed faster, making it complicated all over again. For example, a mechanical sewing machine does the up and down motion all by itself. In one possible case, a simple foot pedal motion can cause the complex action of putting a needle through the cloth. This means not only are you able to spend more of your focus on the positioning of the needle, but also that the stitching itself is more consistent. Both of these increase the production speed by allowing you to move the cloth through the machine faster than you could hand sew it. This is at the expense of more labor up front to build the machine, 
as well as adaptability, and then the increased minimum and overall resource usage. There is a ton to say on that, but that will be saved for future videos. We can't spend all our time building new means of production. We can't just stop eating. So commodities produced are split between consumption, new means of production, and maintaining existing means of production. Building things up over time means easier production in the future. The issue is when it's built in, left to rot. If it's not efficient enough to compete in commodity production, it's abandoned. Regardless of how many people it can sustain and how long it's been around. Or when it doesn't actually save labor in the long run. Why build another coal plant because, holy shit, or it produces something we consume because it's our only option, but don't actually want. College textbooks, and think about the labor that goes into insurance companies. One last thing to end off this video, capital results in centralization. Means of production on a scale that can be competitive become impossible to manage home alone. So instead, it's done so in groups. Under private ownership, those who run it are not those who ultimately control it. So to refresh, capitalism is based on capital, where capital is private ownership over industrialized means of production. Means of production are the tools and systems used by people to produce the resources we use. This private ownership over the means of production is based on one group restricting another's access to production so they can take control of the resources produced. This is possible because industrialization leads to more concentrated means of production that are more labor efficient than what we can do alone. And well, markets. These social relations dominate much of what we do today. Members of the working class often spend the majority of our waking lives doing or preparing to do wage labor. This means the impact it has on us as individuals and as a society is very important. This is something we will talk about in the next video. See you.